Welcome YouTube friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So, thank you all. Thank you all. I feel like I have been a hot mess for like a month here. So just, just to fill you in, I appreciate everyone who's reached out privately or, you know, even in comments. Y'all know I had the ick like for two weeks. Then I hurt my back. <laughs> And then I accidentally consumed soybean, which I'm horribly allergic to. So that was a couple days getting over that. My face is still a little swollen, so please ignore that. Um, guys, I just can't really eat out anymore. Uh, my mom is having some bumps in the road. And I, I don't want to dishonor my mother by, you know, sharing too much information. What I would just say is... When you have dementia, the world around you can be very confusing and it can cause you to have certain, I'll just call them behaviors, that you wouldn't normally have if you didn't have dementia. So that's been a challenge. <laughs> but this morning, I'm going to make some goat's milk, oats, and honey soap. And I am going to leave a link in the description box below. This is my own proprietary recipe, um, but I will leave a link to the Soap Queen. She has hundreds of good soap recipes and you can use the same principles and additives in about any soap recipe, whether you have goat's milk or you want to make a water-based, a distilled water-based soap. So let me get organized here, get my protective gear on, and I'll see y'all in just a minute. Stay now, tuned. I know y'all are going to want to pair of these glasses, but let me just say one of the most important things that you can do to safely make soap is to protect your eyes, your hands. You should wear long pants and long sleeve just in case you were to have a lye splash. The only time I have ever had a lye splash, and this is a weird one, a tiny droplet landed on my upper lip and it will blister you. So um, flush, flush, flush with water should you come in contact with your skin. So I just have on like, actually my dentist keeps me supplied in gloves because I keep them supplied in soaps. So here we go. First thing we're going to do is we're going to mix up our goat's milk. And I want to show you this gorgeous, gorgeous bag of goat's milk that I received um, by bartering, <laughs> by doing some freeze drying from Liz, my chicken lady, because I don't know what else to call her. So anytime you are making a soap recipe, you do want to weigh out all your ingredients. Anytime you're using a dairy product, whether you're putting milk, goat's milk, yogurt, all the things that people do put into soap, it needs to be frozen. Otherwise, the heat from the lye will cause it to curdle. So I'm just going to measure out here. And again, the link that I leave below will tell you how much liquid to how much lye. And I just need a little bit. Do I have a little bit somewhere in here? This is the tough part. I'll just shave it off. Well, that's really nice and frozen. This has been in my deep freeze. I'm annoying myself with goat smoke, but it's super good for your skin, so I'm not terribly worried about it. So why would you? make a soap using goat's milk. Well, goat's milk has been shown to be very soothing to the skin. Good if you have itchy skin conditions. I'm not doing any good, guys. Let me grab a cutting board. You know, something like an eczema or a psoriasis. Um, it's my personal favorite kind of soap. But I do also make vegan soaps because something for everyone. All right. So before I put that in the freezer, let's go ahead and measure out our lye. Now, you want to have separate utensils for all of your soap making. 
you certainly don't want to be eating something after it's had lye in it. So, and sometimes lye will get a little bit clumpy. Oh, I'm probably gonna have to go get more. Let's see if I'm living right. Let me get some more about that, y'all. <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and put this lye right in with our goat's milk. And immediately I'm going to rinse everything with water. Just give it a stir, set it aside. Now, if you have small children or pets that will get into it, Frankie will not bother this. You're gonna to wanna to put it like up in a cabinet, um, somewhere where it won't be touched because it is a very caustic substance. And I'm not trying to scare you, I'm simply trying to make you aware. The next thing I like to add, and this is going to make three pounds of soap, is about three tablespoons of a salt solution. So this will help the lye start to melt goat's milk. The reason you put salt in soap is because it does make for a harder, long-lasting bar. So here's where we are. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to clean up my lye, rinse everything really well, and then we'll get on to adding some oils together and I'll explain to you why I use what I use. Stay tuned. Another link that I will leave in the description box below is to a website called Soap Calc. So you can take a recipe that you find anywhere. You can plug it into Soap Calc and I, I've shared that before in other videos, but it will tell you how hard it will be, how cleansing it will be, how much lather it will have, how bubbly it will be. So depending on what you're striving for and skin type will depend on what oils you add. So today I'm going to be using um, extra virgin olive oil, organic coconut oil, lard, yes I said lard, and castor oil. Now you might be like, wow, that is a very strange combo. But let me explain to you why I'm using what I'm using. So, um, Olive oil, if you don't mix it with other types of oils, you will get a slimy and low lathering soap. But used in the proper ratio, you will get a lightly cleansing, but still moisturizing soap. So it is kind of a good all around oil to be using. And y'all, I'm not trying to be secretive about amounts. I'm really not. But when you develop your own recipe, sometimes it is nice to not be sharing that everywhere. <laughs> okay, so we have our olive oil. The next thing I'm going to add is some coconut oil. Now, let me give you a word of caution about coconut oil. Too much coconut oil, so you want to be using it at a 30 to 35% ratio. What did I do with my spoon? is going to cause a very, very drying soap. Oh, I know what I did with my spoon. Let me get another one out of my soap supplies here. Hang on, maybe. <laughs> All right, so in this particular recipe, give you a little hint, I'm really using equal parts of the olive and the coconut. So I, I'm changing the subject here, but I am going to change the subject. The reason my coconut oil is so hard is because we had a huge change in temperature overnight. It's actually Saturday here. So yeah, I know I said I wasn't going to video till next week, but <laughs> drying guys, I'm really drying. I'm going to go see my mom here in a little bit, but it's far too early. What time is it? It's about 7.30 here. 
So when you know, coconut oil will melt at 76 degrees. So because it is not 76 degrees in my house, I'm having to scoop. And I actually purchased an ice cream scoop that works pretty well for this too. I don't know why I grabbed for a spoon. Now you can do this. We're gonna heat this up and kind of homogenize all the different oils as we go through here. And you can do it in a pot. If you're nervous about measuring directly into the pot, like you're gonna over or under, uh, over actually measure, like put too much, you can measure each of these separately. I've been making soap so long, I don't need to do that. So we are almost there. Scoop ought to get us. And you do want to be pretty exacting on your measurements. I always try to pile my hard oils up on top. So if I need to take a little bit out, I can easily do that. All right. Wow, I'm making a mess. The next oil I'm going to use is lard, and you may be like, well, why on earth would you lose, use lard? Um, lard is pig fat. It is a great oil to use in soap. Um, it's actually the largest quantity of oil I'm going to be using in this recipe. Now, some people prefer tallow, which is beef fat. If you're using tallow, this is my word of caution to you. Uh, tallow can be a little bit more drying, which is perfect if you have very oily skin. I personally do not make tallow soaps because I don't find that my customers like it and they gravitate towards either a vegan mild soap or a large soap. So you can see this is a lot of ingredients. We're almost there. And you may be like, okay, where do you find lard? Well, actually Walmart sells it. Um, and you want that purified white lard that does not smell like bacon. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it any easier. All right, the last ingredient that I'm going to be adding is some castor oil. Now, castor oil makes beautiful bubbles, but if you put too much, you will have the slimiest, nastiest soap that doesn't want to set up. So let me add this in. I actually purchased my castor oil from Amazon from a company called Home Health. So it is ingestible, if you will. Um, some people use castor oil as a laxative. I do not recommend that, y'all. You might never emerge from the restroom. All right. So, double checking our recipe, we have olive coconut lard castor. And I am going to take this to the microwave. I'm going to heat it up. Let's take a peek here at our goat's milk. You can see it's starting to melt nicely, but we need to heat up all of these oils, get them well combined, and then let both of these cool to within 20 degrees of each other before we add any fragrance in our oatmeal. So I'm going to work on that, bring you back shortly. Our goat's milk and lime mixture and our oils have come close in temperature. Y'all, this is a great tool, which is a digital thermometer. Highly recommend for soap making. So I always like to do my mixing in the sink. So here is what our oils look like. And you may notice it has quite a bit of a yellow tinge to it. If you use classic olive oil, it is less yellow. 
This does not have any mica or artificial colorants in this particular recipe. So this will just end up a beautiful creamy beige color. Here is what our goat's milk mixture looks like. So again, I am going to rinse anything with water that's touched the lye, set it aside, and let's combine the two. I think one of the hardest parts for new soap makers is to decide when the soap has come to a term they call trace. And trace is when it sopranifies. So when the oils and the lye come together to make a soap. Now, since this particular soap is pretty simple, doesn't have a lot of complications or colors, etc., I'm not terribly concerned if it's a little thin to start. So a thin trace is okay. Before we start mixing, I am going to add to this mixture about three tablespoons of organic steel cut oats that I have made into colloidal oats simply by uh, using a handy chopper. So put your stick blender in, listen carefully, see the big burp, and then mix. So the reason that term trace came to be is when you dribble the soap at the top, there are traces of the dribbles. This is uh, not yet to trace, so let's keep going. One thing I also wanted to mention is do not be alarmed by the smell. Goat's milk and lye smell a little bit peculiar together. That will dissipate. I'm now going to add in our fragrance oil and I use phthalate free fragrance oil. This is a uh, goat's milk, oats and honey or oats and honey fragrance oil. A little more mixing. We're still very, very thin, so I'm going to continue to mix. So see how the soap is now coating the stick blender? I am going to call that a thin trace. I'm going to pull the head of my stick blender off, stick it in the water. So now that these are mixed, the lye does not have the same causticness, if that's a word. <laughs> so you still want to wear your gloves and your eye protection, etc. So let me scooch you over here. And we are going to add our beautiful soap into a mold that is not going to hold all this soap. I already know that. So we are also going to fill up some oval bars, which sell really well for me. Gosh, we may need one more mold. <laughs> should know that I can actually put a little bit more in here. Now when you get to the very end you may want if there are a lot of oats in the bottom you may want to leave a little bit of that in so that you don't have clumps of oats but this actually mixed up fairly well. All right I did a little sloppage so let me grab a paper towel to wipe up the little bit of soap that I spilt. So once you've done all this, what can you do to make this 
very plain looking soap. Sorry guys, a little bit fancier. Oh, I'm going to show you that. I am going to wait till it comes to a little thicker trace. And, excuse my reach y'all. I'm going to actually do a design in the top. Now you can see I'm really not affecting any major change. So I'm gonna let this sit for a few minutes and then I'm going to make a bit of a design, add some more colloidal oats or some more steel cut oats on the top. And I will bring you back and show you what the final final looks like. Now, do not put any of this in your dishwasher. Even though it is raw soap, it can cause problems with your dishwasher. You want to hand wash everything. So I'm gonna work on cleaning up my mess while this sets and I'll bring you back to show you the final result. Our beautiful soap is finished. I don't wanna destroy the design. I'm going to set this aside until it firms up a little bit more and then it will go behind the cat gate in the curing room. I do spray the tops of all my soap with 91% rubbing alcohol because that will stop the development of soap ash, which will not hurt your soap, but it's a white cast that will appear as part of the curing process and is totally normal. I would love to hear from you. What do you think about trying to make soap this year for Christmas gifts? It's really not a hard process if you just follow the simple principles that I've shared with you today. I also have an entire soap making playlist, which I will link at the very end, and it will tell you how many soap making videos there are in a little box, I think, over there. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Guys, I'm gonna do my best um, to be very faithful with the videos. I have to tell you that, and, and y'all know this, you know, family has to come first. And when my mom is um, having a difficult time, that's where I'm gonna have to be sometimes, which can make it a little bit harder to do videos, but I am going to do my best. Hopefully stay well, <laughs> stay well after all of the bumps in the road that I've had. So I really appreciate your time today. Go ahead and smash that like button, drop me a comment. Are you gonna to try to make soap? I would love to hear. And until I see you again, be healthy, be well, be blessed, take care.